to this now. The Judicial Services Commission will from Tuesday start interviews for the new Chief Justice of South Africa. The interviews will be chaired by Supreme Court of Appeal Deputy President Tola Beze. In November 2021, President Cyril Ramaphosa nominated the four candidates for the running of the position, namely Justice Mbuiseli Madlanga, President of the Supreme Court of Appeal Mandisa Maya, Khalteng Judge President Dunstan Mlambo, and current Acting Chief Justice Raymond Zondo. For more on what this four-day process will look like and what we can expect to come out of the interviews is researcher at Judges Matters, Begazili Benjamin. Begazili, thank you so much for your time and thank you for joining us. We we are nearing the end of what has been a long process. It kick-started by the president's invitation to the public to give their nominations for the position. What's your assessment of the process so far? Uh, <clears throat> good morning, Tawaza, and good morning to the viewers at home. Well, uh, so far, the process has been um, a, 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 a open and competitive one, which is exciting. Um, it's, it's really, really a good thing that uh, our country has really good judges have put themselves forward to be Chief Justice. That is not something that other countries benefit from and something that we've not had in the past. But, of course, we still are very critical of the process in terms of how long it has taken and how slow it has moved. We're hoping that by the end of last year, at least, the president would have uh, finalized the appointment of the chief justice. But be, there, be that as it may, um, we are looking forward to the interviews coming up this week. I mean, given the fact that it has been a, a long process, as per your own critique of it, what should have been done to ensure that it, it in fact, stuck to the original timelines in your mind? Well, we think the president should have started the process early um, because the, the first thing was that we all knew that uh, Chief Justice Mokweng was going to retire on the 11th of October. So it didn't need to start only a month before um, he, he retired. It should have started at the beginning of the year at least so that it could allow these, the, the process of, of shortlisting, the process of interviews by the Ju Judicial Service Commission and also the consultation with leaders in, 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 in Parliament. So that, that was the first mistake, that the President only started the, the process um, uh, 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 well later than he should have. But um, at, this, at this stage, um, the interview stage is actually one of the most important ones because the Constitution requires that the uh, 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 President consult with the JSC and the JSC does those consultations through public interviews. And, and through those interviews, we actually pick up what the candidate's uh, uh, vision is for the judiciary, whether they have the necessary experience for them to be uh, Chief Justice, and also we get a sense of um, what it is that the candidates will, will do once they are in office as Chief Justice. Mm. I want to talk about what was the sort of departure from what was you know, normal practice, and that was, of course, the President's invitation to the public to bring forward their own nominations. It was interesting to note that from the public's process of nomination, uh, names such as those of Western Cape Judge President John Schlaupe and Public Protector Busisiwe Mkwebane came up. Individuals who one could say have clouds over their heads, but nominated by the, the public nonetheless. Does that make for an, does that make an argument for or against opening up processes like this to the public again? Uh, was it a good route, essentially? Well, as judges matter, we still believe that it was a good, a good road to follow to open the process up to public nominations because this is a, a very important uh, job. It is the chief justice is the top judge in the country, and so it is important that the public have a say on who that person becomes. Of course, when you open the window, you don't only get sunshine, but you also sometimes get mosquitoes and flies and all kinds of things. So there is always uh, the risk that you'll also invite uh, an, nominations from people that you would rather not have in the process. But because there was this selection panel, which was headed by a judge and which featured uh, uh, important and, and people with uh, uh, huge reputations in the country, like uh, Advocate Tulima Donzella, uh, 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 people like uh, Steve, uh, Steve Litzike, who is a human rights activist. So they sat and looked through all the nominees, and they eventually settled on this four list uh, on this list of four uh, candidates, and all of them are e excellent. Uh, I, I must emphasize that point. 
that the final list that we have, the, it's so competitive that any of those candidates could be appointed as chief justice tomorrow and they would do a decent job. So I think through there were safeguards within the, the system to, to not get uh, le- less strong candidates, but only the strongest candidates um, made it through and up to this point. Sure. You're absolutely correct in saying the, the four candidates that will be interviewed next week are absolutely exceptional and compelling to say the least. But I do want to talk about, uh, you know, Judge Mandisa Maya. You know, in the lead up to the president's invitation, there were growing calls for a woman to be elected to the position. We know that the bench at the Conk Court has adopted an egalitarian environment and that no one justice enjoys more influence or power than the other. So there is that equilibrium. But it, it does say something if a woman heads up the constitutional court. I wonder if now is the time to, in fact, have a woman head up the apex court. Well, I, I think uh, Judge Maya is, is an excellent judge. Um, she has a track record that is, that is absolutely brilliant because from the time that she was in, in private practice as an advocate, she was doing really well. She has qualifications from overseas, from America. Um, she has led as a judge. Um, a, she has been able to transform what was a 100-year institution and be able to make it perform at the highest possible level, but also be inclusive. So in the time that she has been the head of the Supreme Court of Appeal, she's brought on more women into that court, more than the past 100 years prior to her becoming the president of the, of the SCA. So I think on her qualifications alone, she is well prepared to be Chief Justice. But of course, there is the element that um, she's also a woman. And the Constitution, in fact, requires that when uh, uh, appointments to the, to the bench are made, that you consider the, demographic, the demographics of the country. So you must look at the racial and gender composition of the country. And South Africa is a majority woman uh, uh, country. And so it makes sense that uh, the Chief Justice would also be a woman. So I think uh, Justice Maya is, is an excellent judge, excellent leader, but she also has this added bonus that she's also a woman. Mm. Lastly, Begazeli, at, at the risk of becoming biased <laughs> in this conversation, <laughs> you know, during the interviews last year as a viewer, I was equally intrigued. Um, as I was frustrated, you know, most of the candidates, as you've said, were decorated, highly accomplished, and clearly some of the leading minds in the legal profession, how does one whittle down the list and choose from such a pool? You know, Judges Matters, the organization that you work for, has previously criticized the JSC for failing to have a set up criteria for the process. Please expand on that and, and perhaps, you know, bring the country into your confidence. Well, one of the uh, flaws that we have identified, so we've been watching the JSC interviews at least since 2009. So we've seen at least two chief justices being appointed. And one of the problems that the JSC has, and it has this problem for many, many years, is that it doesn't really have an idea of what it is that they are looking for. So it doesn't have a set or a list of things or, or key qualities that they're looking for. If you and Dogozo or I were interviewing for a job, you would know the requirements up front, what the job requires. Right now, the JSC does not have that. And so it, it will be very difficult um, for them to pick one candidate from the other. And we, are, we as the public, we wouldn't also know which ones they favor and what they favored and for what reason. So as judges matter, one of the, the things that we proposed, um, among a few others, is that they have a set of criteria because firstly, it, it, it lets us know what they are looking for, but secondly, it guides the kind of questions that um, they ask of the candidates because one of the problems that I'm sure you were frustrated by seeing is that anyone could ask any question under the sun, and that is not really productive for a, a interview that has a status such as this and right. for a job that is so important. So we, we believe that they should have a set of criteria and, 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 and should be urgent and they should let us know as the public what their criteria look like. Right, that was Mbegazeli Benjamin, researcher at Judges Matters, helping us to turn our eyes toward that interview process that's set to kickstart next week to fill the position of the country's next Chief Justice.